Hey, welcome back to another video. I scan all of my own negatives myself. I use an Icon CoolScan 4000. I use ViewScan to access the software to that scanner, and I convert all of the negatives in Lightroom with Negative Lab Pro. I'm gonna go over my workflow today, show you how I use the scanner, show you how I convert my negatives, and hopefully this will teach you something. I'm making this video because when I first started scanning, I couldn't really find a good video of how to use ViewScan with the Nikon CoolScan. There's a lot of options, a lot of ways that you can scan your negatives, and I'm just going to show you front to back how I take a film negative, scan it, and convert it so that you're getting the best image quality possible. So let's start off by going over ViewScan, and if you have questions about why I use a Nikon CoolScan 4000, you can go back to my last video where I talked about a bunch of different cool scans in detail and how you can find the best one for you on eBay. So let's jump in and start to look at the options that I have selected. For my source, I have my 4000, and I'm asking it to scan slide film here because I want to get a color negative image back so that I can convert it in Negative Lab Pro in Lightroom. I feel like for my money, I'm getting better colors and image quality out of Negative Lab Pro, and so I would much rather convert it there. I'm fine with the preview area being auto because this is just what I'm seeing on my screen. We'll go over the actual image that it's giving me later. I'm scanning 48 bits. I have batch scan turned on because in my 4000 I can scan an entire roll of film so I want it to do the whole thing. The frame offset might change per scan that you're doing, but for the last one that I was doing I was offsetting my frame by 2.5 so that I could get the correct crop. I keep frame spacing to zero. I don't like to scan from the preview. I want the preview resolution at 500 dpi because that's the lowest and that means it'll be the quickest and preview doesn't matter as much as the scan resolution which I keep at 4000 dpi and that is the highest dpi that this scanner can scan at and that's true native resolution which basically means it's the max that this scanner is capable of. Every scanner has a native resolution and you can kind of think about it like how some cameras can shoot video in 1080p and if you scaled it up to 4k it would fill that frame but it would be more pixely. Your native resolution is what your scanner is actually capable of scanning and the Nikon CoolScan 4000 is capable of 4000 dpi. I don't have auto flip on, rotation happens to be right just because of the last roll that I was scanning. Auto skew on, mirror off, auto focus, I do this on always because I always want it to auto focus per frame. If yours is not coming in focus, you're gonna to want to manually focus it. I have auto scan to scan rather than scan plus just because I want to be able to press the button to tell it to go. It's gonna auto save every image once I hit that scan button, I don't want it to auto print. It'll auto eject if I quit view scan. For negative film, you want the number of samples to be lower. Um, if you're scanning color positive film, you can have that set to be higher, but it's basically the amount of passes that it's doing per frame. And so if I set it to two, it would take literally twice as long to scan per frame. And I've done some side by side comparisons. I don't think it gives me the amount of quality back that is worth twice as much time. I have the frame alignment set to negative film because I am scanning negative film and so I want it to know that each space in between the frames is for negative film. I don't have multiple exposure or lock exposure. I keep all the red, green, and blue set to one, which is the default. And then these options we'll get into with the output up here. For crop, I have the size set to maximum just because I want it to give me as much as possible. This is what I was talking about before. It doesn't really matter about what the preview size is, but the maximum I want on the actual output of the image. No skew, no multi-crop, no lock aspect ratio. The border and buffer percentages are great here. This is the default, same with X and Y offsets. For filter, I like to keep the infrared clean on light so that if there's any really, really tiny dust, it'll remove it, but the rest of the removal process I do in Lightroom and then off or none for the rest of these. For color settings, this is all the generic settings. I usually keep that the same just because it's scanning exactly what I'm giving into it. If I was converting the negative from a negative into a positive within view scan, I would actually go through all the, these color changes, make sure that the color was right, but I'm gonna do all of that in Negative Lab Pro. So you can have your location set to whatever folder that you're saving your film to. I usually do a TIFF and I save it via the date because that's how I have my film organized. I don't reduce it at all, um, I don't need the multi-page, and it is saved at 48 bits. I like to do a TIFF DNG file because a DNG file is going to give me as much information as possible and that's going to be really helpful in the conversion process. And then all of the rest of this doesn't really matter, but you can just keep it on default for the, the remainder. And all of these preferences don't particularly matter, you can go through and look at them, um, but I have them all on default. 
So let's actually scan some film. The first step of this is going to be checking our frame offset and seeing if that still applies from the last time we scanned film. And I'm going to scan the CineStill 400D that I just shot on holiday. If you're trying not to get dust on your film, this is not really how you want to do it. Um, but I've already scanned this so that I'm good. Okay, so first thing that I'm looking at here on this frame is how much border there is. This is a little bit more than I had last time I scanned, and so likely I'm gonna have to readjust the frame offset. And I'm gonna stick this film in with the font up where I can read it. This is how your film needs to be aligned to go in the scanner. Okay, and as I'm already seeing, this frame alignment might actually be good because I'm getting a little bit of the edge here, and I'm probably gonna get about that much of the edge there, and that's exactly what I wanna see. So I don't need to do anything to readjust this frame. But let me show you how I do it. So I'm gonna cancel this scan. I'm gonna set this to zero. And the scanner just readjusted to be zero on the frame offset. And as you can tell, I'm getting a really big buffer over here. And likely I'm not gonna have any buffer over here at all and the frame's actually gonna be cut off. And so it is cut off. I'm going to cancel this really quick. Okay, and now that it's canceled, what we're going to do is take our buffer side right here and flip it over onto our left-hand side. And as you can see down here in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see my XY axis when I move my mouse. And so I'm going to go just right here with a, a little bit of buffer from the frame. And I see that it's 2.18 on the X axis. And so that's what I'm going to type in to my frame offset. It's going to not give you exact numbers on 2.18 because of the gear that's inside of there is not going to be 2.18. It's 2.178 or probably like 2.185 or something. But now that we're scanning, you see that it's tighter on this side and it should be perfectly aligned on the other side too to give you that maximum frame. And that's a really quick and easy way to figure out your frame alignment. It works almost every single time. And so now let's scan this whole roll of film and then I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, now that we have our scans, let's drop them into Lightroom and look at converting them. As you can see here, I just have seven um, files. I ended up doing a shorter scanning session just because I don't want to convert all of them. I've already done them. And so we'll just look at these seven. So once we get these imported, I'm importing them into a collection here so we can just look at these. We have our DNG files here of negative film. So let's take this first frame. We're gonna get in here and go up to File, Plugin Extras, Negative Lab Pro, or you can do Control N to do a hotkey. Um, we need to set this to View Scan DNG so that it knows what it's pulling. Um, I like to keep the color model on basic, um, just so it's giving me a little bit of color boost, but not a ton. Um, and the pre-saturation, I like to keep it on medium. Three is a default, so if you want to tone it back just a little bit, that also is great. I wouldn't tread into the high or very low kind of areas. The border buffer I set to 5% because we scanned the maximum frame. So as you can see here, we have the black and um, in between border buffers. We don't want Lightroom or Negative Lab Pro for that matter to pull from that information when it does its conversion. We want it to convert from just the stuff in the middle. So as you can see here, let's preview what it looks like to have that border buffer. And we don't have that black line or the in between anymore. A lot of videos will tell you that you need to white balance the border edge before you go into Negative Lab Pro. I also agree with that, except I like to do both. I like to take a look at what it looks like without it and with it, because sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't work well at all. And for the most part, I'm getting a pretty consistent image without white balancing to the buffer, and so I always start there first. So let's convert it here. And this looks like a pretty solid image so far. So as you can see, the image is pretty contrasty, makes sense. It was right at sunset, um, but not the golden hour sunset, just the harsh light 
part of Sunset. And so you can sit here and adjust um, things as you wish. I'm going to go in and do some small tweaks to my film negatives. A lot of people are on their high horse about not wanting to edit their film negatives at all, um, but that really, to me, is untruthful. Every scanner, every lab, every person who's ever looked at a film negative has always made some sort of edit to it. Whether that's the pre-saturation that you're doing in Negative Lab Pro or going with basic versus frontier versus none, when you go to set up that conversion, or just by giving it to one lab over the other. Your scans are always gonna come back different. And so the important thing to me is to make my photo look like I remember it looking when I was taking it. I'm not gonna go crazy and add in a bunch of orange light so that it looks like it's more at sunset or less at sunset. I'm gonna go in and try to just tweak it to be a really nice looking image. And so for this one, for example, I'm probably gonna raise the shadows just a little bit so I get a little bit more color information out of the scan. And I'm gonna take a look at what it looks like with the lights pulled down just a little bit to see if I can get some more definition in the clouds and maybe even pull just the general brightness down a little bit. And because I brought the light down, I'm gonna bring the white up just a little bit so that white balance doesn't get lost. And I'm gonna go in here and just take a look at what it looks like with different hues. And this to me looks much more like what it looked like when I was actually there taking the photo. So that's pretty quick and easy, um, but that is only one frame at a time. We can actually go back and because of the new version of Negative Lab Pro, we can take multiple images, select them all at once, and go to File, Plug in Extra, Negative Lab Pro, again, and we're gonna go in here and convert all six negatives with Roll Analysis on. So as these convert, they're actually looking at one another to figure out what the light should be and we can take a look at these individually if we want. I can already tell that they're looking pretty yellow, and so I'm probably gonna have to go in and actually look at each one of them. Like this image, for instance, is looking pretty green. We can go in here into the settings and look at the Negative Lab Pro preset filters for film stocks, and I was shooting on Cine still, so let's take a look at what that looks like. That already looks a whole lot better. I also want to mess with the tone profile and go to what I usually use, which is lab standard. And this looks a bit better, but again, it's still not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to pull these lights down, see if I can get more definition out of things. Um, pull these darks up just a little bit, pull the blacks down, and then I'm going to see if I can get the white balance to be correct. So if we go here and take a look, I'll just show you a couple of them, but since it's still T and it's looking a little orange, it's still D, almost there, auto cool. This is kind of more of what I'm looking for, but it's maybe a little blue in the greens. Um, and then I want to look at none again. Yeah, looking pretty green. Maybe an auto average. That's kind of looking a little bit better. So I'm gonna just adjust it by hand now. And that's looking much more in line with what I was thinking it was gonna look like. But this is a pretty good example of how I might actually go back and then white balance for the border buffer and then go again just to see if I can get a better image. And really there's two options here. Because we did roll analysis for the last time, I might just straight up unconvert it and reconvert it again and see if it gives me a better image. So let's do that first. We're going to go back here to convert. We're going to hit unconvert one negative and then we're going to hit convert again and see what it does. And that looks a whole lot better. Negative Lab Pro's roll analysis has been really cool so far, but for me, I think I'm getting better color quality going frame by frame, and I'm sure it's going to get better over time. This is the first iteration that roll analysis has had so far. And since I'm a lot happier with this image, I'm just going to keep it. So let's go look at our next one. So here's one of my favorite images from the roll. Um, I want to show you kind of what my settings looked like for this one. When I first converted it, I used basic as my color model again, used four, medium as my pre-saturation, still used the border buffer because it had a border at the time. And then when I converted it, I didn't do a whole lot. I raised my darks a little bit because it was looking kind of dark. And then other than that, I didn't really touch anything. These auto neutral, that's kind of where it landed based on the conversion. And then I left my sharpening as set. So I didn't do a bunch of extra sharpening or anything like that to the image. Um, it's looking pretty sharp as is. But even then, I could go back in here, um, hit develop, go to sharpening and raise that a little bit, just to give me that little extra bit of definition. If you look in the shadows of parts of this image and really zoom in, 
you'll see a like color shift that's going on here. Sometimes I like to just come down here and add just the slightest bit of color denoising so that it's cleaning up some of those colors. And this to me turned out to be a really great image. And so this isn't a bad image, but it's not how I remember shooting it. And honestly, this contrast right here looks way too dense for what it should be as a Cinestill 400D frame. And so really I have two options here. If I don't want to edit it in Lightroom because I don't believe in editing, I can go back to my scanner, raise the brightness a little bit so that it scans with a brighter light, and then it'll have a better image. Or I can just readjust it a little bit and it'll do the exact same thing and save me time. At the end of the day, these are my images and so I get to tweak them as much as I want to. If I'm not editing for the integrity of film, well then someone else is going to edit it if I send them off to be scanned somewhere else. And so for me, raising the shadows a little bit so that I can see things a little bit better, lowering the light, and giving it a little bit of sharpening, that to me created a lot better of an image and preserved what my memory of that moment was. This was a really fun adventure that I got to go on with my wife, and so I want to preserve what this looks like, not only in my head, but on the screen when I go back and look at these images. So it's really fun to mess around with. Um, I hope that this video was helpful for you. I've slowly been learning how to do all of this myself, YouTube's a funny place to try to figure out how all this works. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me and reach out. If you have any suggestions or questions on how to do scanning or how to take photos better, I'd be happy to field some of those in the comments section. But for now, I'm going to take a picture of something that matters and scan it well. We'll see you in the next one.